Hi there, everyone. Welcome to the Atlanta SEO for Local Businesses Meetup. I am Trisha Clements here with our co-host, uh, Andy Simpson, and uh, we have our meetups the second Wednesday of the month, 1130 a.m. Eastern Time. We have monthly topics on lo local SEO for businesses, small businesses and also for agencies. Our next meetup is going to be April the 10th. Uh, I'm going to post uh, links in the chat for everyone for our YouTube channel where I post the videos usually within about a week um, and also links to our Facebook group and meetup. So today we have David Zimmerman here. He is a digital marketing consultant who's been helping his clients get found by their customers for over 15 years. Today, he's going to be talking about lead generation unlocked, mastering the art of magnetizing customers. Uh, he'll answer help answer questions about um, if your website is ranking, getting traffic, but you're not seeing new customers, uh, what you can do. Also, if your traffic is growing, but your new leads are stagnant. Um, so David is going to go over that and show us how to get more from your website with a productive lead magnet. All right, David, let, let's hear what you've got for us. I'm really interested to hear about this today. Thank you for having me. Um, it's good to see y'all and, uh, well, it's good for you to see me, I guess. No, it's great to be here today. Yeah, I've spoken before a couple of things. I think last time I spoke about, uh, using Bing webmaster tools to rank on Google, <laughs> which I still think is quite a hilarious topic, but anyway, today we're going to talk about, uh, mastering the art of magnetizing customers, or another way to think about this is uh, creating a lead magnet and why you would want to create a lead magnet and what it can do for your business or even your agency. So let's let's talk about uh, you know we're kind of an SEO meetup so can we can we bear you know talk about our problems for a little bit you know um, you ever had that conversation with a client where they're like hey you know where do I rank for this and then like the next day they send you another email where do I rank for that or hey you know I was googling myself today and I where do I rank for this and I don't see myself ranking for that in like oh lord like the the rank game like isn't that exhausting you know, uh, they wake up one morning and they just have a word in their brain that they got to rank for somehow. And that that's exhausting, isn't it? Like, uh, if there were only a way we could break out of that kind of, what about, where do I rank for this kind of idea? Well, listen carefully, because I think this can help. Or, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you kind of um, realize that, you know, you might be getting some traffic to your site. Uh, or maybe your client's sites, but like they're complaining because why am I paying you? They're not really seeing the business. Uh, have you ever had that conversation with the client? Or maybe, maybe you experienced that on your website where you get a bunch of traffic, but like nobody, nobody's becoming a customer that you can see. And, and that's frustrating, isn't it? Well, I think we might have the solution for that problem. Or, or maybe you find yourself that yeah, SEO just seems to be getting harder and harder, right? Oh, you know, the uh, search results like Google is just pushing down the organics more and more and and, and kind of, you know, the, the, the helpful content update. Oh, my goodness. Like, I'm convinced that when Google needs to return better in, uh, money to their investors, they do a major Google, Google algorithm shift drop our traffic off so people just finally say, oh, I give up and pay Google for paid search. I mean, is that is that what you're kind of feeling right now? Um, I think lead magnets might be a solution for that problem. Or, or maybe you're like a web agency and mostly what you do is build websites for people. Great. Like that's something I don't do. That's a skill set. I appreciate what you do. I'm glad you do it because I don't want to do it. But, you know, I think the common problems with web agencies is that everybody comes and says, yeah, that's great, but I just don't have that kind of budget for a website. Or, you know, they're, a, you know, a major service provider and they're just like, I want a brochure website. Like, I, no one does business over the web. I, I mean, even to this day, I still have this conversation with clients. Um, how do we overcome those kinds of things? Like, you know, whether you're, you know, whether you even have a budget for these things. 
I think league magnets can help with that. So I'd like to talk today about why you should be implementing lead magnets on your site or on your client's site and how we do it. So the first thing I think we need to talk about is just getting our definitions together. Um, I just find in the digital space, so many times the conversations about different ideas get confused and uh, sometimes people get mixed up on what things are, common definitions. So I'd like to define a lead magnet as something a potential customer downloads in exchange for their email address. That's kind of what we're talking about. You know, I'm suggesting that what we need to do on all of our clients' websites, on all of our websites, is offer something, just something simple they can download that is so valuable to them, they'd be willing to give you their email address. That's really what a lead magnet is. But let's think about some examples of this. Uh, I, I think what works best for a typical lead magnet is some sort of PDF, um, <clears throat> some sort of document that gets downloaded uh, that can be printed perhaps. Uh, and, and when I say just some sort of document, I mean like maybe it's a guide or maybe I really like checklists as uh, as lead magnets. You know, download this checklist to do something for your clients. Uh, you know, sometimes a, a, a lead magnet can be something that's not like a downloadable PDF. Maybe it's a webinar. But the lead magnet needs to be something that's free. You know, I think this is where clients get a little confused when they talk about lead magnets. Uh, they they are afraid of giving away the sauce that they would normally charge for. So, for example, one of my clients, they work in the industrial space. Um, and so what we did is we took an inspection checklist, like literally they get paid thousands of dollars to go on site at one of these industrial plants and run through this checklist. <clears throat> we converted this into a lead magnet that the client could put on their site. What was great about this lead magnet is number one, only potential customers would be really interested in this, right? They got a lot of false positive traffic. A previous SEO company had built some just generic content on their site. And, and they were getting a lot of visits from like, from what we could tell, like high school students who were doing research papers on a very broad topic. That's really not a lot of traffic from customers. But if you put, they put this inspection checklist on their website, and that immediately weeded, self-selected the people to their customers because only their customers would be interested in this checklist. Now, we, we, we gave this checklist away. <clears throat> Again, it's the same checklist they would literally be commissioned by a client of theirs to give. We gave to them for free. And at first, the client was a little cynical. They were like, wait. We charge for this normally, and we're going to give it for free. But that's kind of the secret. What you give people needs to be valuable. And, and we got to remember the value of free when it comes to lead magnets. Um, we want to give something some to somebody that has actual value right? Sure, we could come up with some baloney-like guide that talks a lot, but it, if it's just a blog post, well, would I be willing to give you my email address in exchange for that? Yeah, probably not. Like, I can read about a topic anywhere. But if it's something valuable like this checklist, even if it's the checklist they charge people to do, then it becomes the value, we see the value of free, and we give that to them 
and they're willing to give us their email address. That's kind of the, the example of what we're talking about for a good lead magnet. Because a good lead magnet has to be worth it. And, and what I say by that is <clears throat> we, our email addresses are, I don't know about you, but I'm so sick of spam, <laughs> right? I, I'm so tired of solicitations I'm not interested in. I'm so tired. And I so as a result, I kind of guard my email pretty closely, right? I don't want to give it out just for anything. So the lead magnet, if I'm going to give my email for a lead magnet, um, you better prove to me that there's some value in it. Um, as I say this, I actually think about this morning that I got a, a new lead magnet solicitation in my inbox today from Don Miller. I don't know if you know Don Miller and the story brand model. He's got a new product and system out. And I got the email and I'm like, oh, this is uniquely about what I do. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, and get that. And so I gave Don Miller again my email address because what he offered were a lot of value. He gave templates. He gave examples. He gave, um, you know, kind of almost worksheets where you fill in the blank. He gave me a lot of value for what I simply gave him, which was just my email address, which in this case I already had, really. He already had, otherwise I wouldn't have got the solicitation. But that's that's the trick. You have to be able to produce something as a lead magnet that has real value because that money, or sorry, that email that you're giving is you're, you're, you're basically allowing someone to dominate your time by filling your inbox. Um, now here's the trick with this client that had the, uh, the inspection checklist that we talked about, they might've gotten paid for doing that inspection checklist. In some cases, thousands of dollars to do that checklist for someone. But what made it valuable to give away for free is that they knew the clients couldn't complete the checklist by themselves. They kind of gave them a checklist that was the actual checklist that they use, comprehensive, accurate, you need to check this, you need to check that, be sure to check this, don't forget to check that, knowing they weren't able to complete it. So then at the end, they could say, by the way, if you need help or if you discover something that maybe needs a professional look, contact us. And that was the call to action at the end, right? So they, it was okay to give away something for free because in a way they knew the client wasn't able to do it all. So they gave, I think that's what we, one of the lessons we have to learn about lead man creation is be sure to create something that's free, that's valuable, and that maybe is a little hard for the client to do by themselves fully, which is why they need to turn to you in the first place. So <laughs> you might have be listening to me today like okay this is great i like this idea of a lead magnet but uh, i got i i just don't even know <laughs> like how am i gonna think of a lead magnet how the hell am i gonna produce a lead magnet like uh this is a little overwhelming but never fear let me talk you through what i think are are the basics the first thing you need to do when you create a lead magnet is simply find a topic. Um, the topic should be something that your customers are actually interested in. And I think the best place to find these kind of these ideas, these topics for lead magnets is in your own files. I will often ask my clients when I develop a lead magnet for them, do you have a, an intake form? Do you have already some sort of inspection checklist that you use? Do you have something that you use, maybe even you charge money to do, that would be valuable for the client to see? And 
oftentimes I find the clients do have something like this. Now, let's say you're a web agency. Well, that, that would be actually a good thing. You probably have an intake form that you, uh, you know, question that you like to ask your new website customers. Uh, you know, do you own your domain name? Like, does the website already exist? Like, what's your budget? Uh, all these questions that you need to know in order to produce a quote for a website for your clients. Now, you probably already have this written down. What if you were to give that checklist away? Because I'd say that would make a really good lead man in a couple of ways. Number one, if someone came to you and said, hey, I did a website. I downloaded your checklist for websites. I filled it out. Here it is. Wow. Wouldn't that make your life a lot easier? <laughs> right? Like that's a slam dunk website sale. The, here's all the things you need to know, you know, where your hosting is, who owns the domain name, what the chief goal is. They give you, because they've done the work that saved you a phone call to figure out. Yeah, sure, you might have to have a phone call to kind of clarify some of that. But wouldn't it make your life easier to sell that website if you, they came to you? But how many times have you as a web designer tried to build a website for someone and you're walking them through your checklist and they're like, you know, I don't know. I think I need to ask Sally about that. And I don't know about that one. So I'm going to ask Sam about that. Wouldn't it be better <laughs> if they sat down and had that opportunity to go through all that stuff ahead of time? In fact, maybe what might happen is only the more qualified clients would actually take the time and get to you. The ones that were just looky loose, kicking the tires, looking for the cheapest price available, they probably wouldn't take the time to fill it out. So I guess what I'm saying here is when you're thinking about a topic for a lead magnet, look inside yourself. Look at your own internal documents first. That might make a good lead magnet that would be valuable to your customers, but also be valuable to you. So once you have a topic, once you have an idea, the inspection checklist, the, the website building guidelines, the whatever it might be, I have on my website, one of my lead magnets is a, a story brand checklist. I like to use the story brand model. Uh, I find that some of it's a little limited, so I've created this little wor uh, Excel sheet, actually, and you fill in the blanks, and it kind of helps you work through your story brand model, right? But once you have your topic, the first thing you have to do is write it. And when you write it, I think the, you need to start with a customer problem. So don't just say, here's a checklist. They get the checklist. But first, before you show them what they need to do in the checklist, if, we, if for instance, we use a checklist, take some time and empathize with their problems. Talk about how, hey, have you ever tried the website build before and then you get into it and now the changes, uh, you know, the requirements changed and now the bill is getting bigger. If that's been you, you need this checklist or hey, you know, have you ever tried to convince your boss that you need to fix up this aspect of your plant? Uh, yeah, because you know, you got to keep the plant running and uh, you said, use this checklist. This will help you. Always start with the problem that the client is facing. That consequently, the meat of the lead magnet, the value of the lead magnet is... Um, going to show. So the documents you provide should always start with an empathetic statement of whatever the problems are that the client's going to face so that you can then come and save the day. So the second part of your lead magnet, after you've talked about the problems, is giving it away. Give away the valuable checklist. Give away the inspection documentation. Remind them to look under this nook or cranny before you go, like, give it away to them for free. So what now you've done by giving them this lead magnet 
is you've said, hey, you know what? I know what you, dear business owner, potential client, are struggling with. And I, I've heard this problem before. And I'm going to give you for free a solution to your problems. And that is this checklist, this guide, this Excel worksheet. I'm going to give it to you for free because I get your problems. But the next and most important step that every lead magnet should include, don't just talk about their problems. I mean, it's great to create empathy with a potential client. Don't just give it to them for free, which is, it's really, again, the value of free in this context can be immensely helpful to you in your business as it is to your client or potential client in their business. Give them a call to action. Um, at the end of every PDF, every, every lead magnet you create, make sure you invite them to take advantage of a related service. And, you know, that's kind of what we did with this, this plant inspection checklist thing. We, 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 we created the empathy. Hey, you know, you got to keep your plant running because God forbid it slow down because of a maintenance problem. Oh boy, what a nightmare to use this checklist and prevent problems to keep your plant running. And oh, by the way, if you encounter anything problematic or if you have a hard time on this checklist inspection, give us a call. We want to help you because we want to solve the problem that we identified. You know, if you're a web developer, maybe you, you did a similar thing. If you ever, you know, had worked with a web developer who didn't have actions together and the website project took forever and had scope creep and ended up being much more expensive, has that been you? Well, guess what? Here's a checklist to ensure that never happens to you again so your website gets delivered on time and on price. And when you've done this and you're ready to use it, don't forget to give us a call because now it's we're going to do this for you, right? Or my story brand checklist. Hey, hey, you know, have you, I think it starts off with the effect of the idea that, hey, you know, have you done story brand and they, story brand people promised you to improve your SEO? <laughs> I hate, I hate that. Don Miller promises to help your SEO if you just do story brand. Oh, is that you? Well, it didn't work, did it? Well, maybe it's because you only focused on one page of your website and you didn't really talk about it in terms of the ways your customers are searching for you. So use this checklist and start applying this to every page of your website. And now you'll have a story brand model for every page of your website. And by the way, you know, this is kind of hard to do by yourself. So why don't you give me a call? Let's get on the phone and I will help you work through your story brand for you, right? That's this kind of this basic model, what makes a good lead magnet. But you got to think of the topic yourself. You have to think of what it's going to be and think about the value you can give for free to your customers. <clears throat> now, it's really important when you talk about these lead magnet kind of things and um, to talk about good design. Now, as, as an SEO kind of guy, I kind of don't really care about design. <laughs> like, you know, I want it to look good and I want it to be effective and I know bad design, but I design is not my specialty. Um, so I really kind of punt and just kind of refer this to the experts to do. But when you do a lead magnet, I, I think it's important to make sure the design is consistent. Um, good branding is not just a logo, right? And it's not just a font or color scheme. Good branding is an efficient way to communicate something about a company. Um, the color choices can, can associate yourself as a company with uh, concepts that you want people to do. But it also can be a very efficient way of communicating. So, for instance, if uh, when you design a lead magnet, take don't just write a blank PDF and like throw it in there, right? Uh, uh, like something you wrote on your Word doc. Like take time and put pictures of your office, put pictures of your people, put colors and designs and fonts that resemble your website from which they got. 
the lead magnet. Because the idea here with this lead magnet and brand consistency is it becomes a, a, what we call efficient communication. Where did I get that from, that lead magnet checklist thing? Oh, it was kind of red, white, and blue like that. Oh, that like that company, right? That's kind of the important of having um, valuable uh, brand consistency, as my phone's being called. It's a telemarketer. Um, so make sure to take the time to develop branding within the consideration so you have a really consistent and con uh, a way, a efficient way to communicate things. The most graphic picture of the presentation. Um, <laughs> One of the things I really like about lead magnets is, is its value in the meat space. <laughs> yeah, here we are in a digital webinar on my Zoom. I'm sitting in Charlotte. You know, you're maybe around Atlanta. The cool thing about a lead magnet is it's printable. And that's why I kind of prefer the PDF type lead magnets. Uh, oftentimes, especially in, in uh, B2B businesses, the president of the company puts his administrative assistant or the, the intern and goes, find people who can do this. And, and off they go to Google and whatever and find someone who does this. Well, they need to give their boss something because they've been tasked to go find a bunch of people who do this service. If you can provide a lead magnet you can then give them something they can print out to hand to the next person. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe the CEO is the one doing the search. He's the one going out and finding someone and he gives it to his marketing people to say, hey, I like this, why don't you go do this? The value of something printable to be able to put in meat space to be given out is not to be underestimated. But when you're doing this in your lead magnet, don't forget you want to know the effectiveness of the thing that you've given in meat space, right? If it's just an online thing, well, we can usually kind of see the effectiveness because online tools are inherently trackable. But once that's put in real life, that PDF, we don't know how much business you got from that little PDF that got printed out. So when you're designing your PDF, your, your lead magnet, Maybe you take a little extra time and put a tracking phone number in the in the lead magnet. You know, call us if you need help. And that phone number is the only place that appears is in the lead magnet. So anybody who calls that number, you know they found you from the lead magnet. And usually whatever phone call tracking system you can use uh, will allow you to buy a number and dedicate it to a particular source. That's all I'm suggesting. It's actually pretty cost effective. And if some of these lead magnets generate good, big business, it's worth it. But oftentimes, you know, you don't even want to do a phone call or maybe that you don't want to do a tracking number. At least put a URL in your PDF. What I like to do is create a URL with mywebsite.com slash lead magnet, slash checklist, slash whatever. Well, that page doesn't really exist on my website, but I set up a redirect that anybody who requests website.com slash lead magnet, that goes through a redirect, which includes the Google UTM codes. And so when that person opens up the page, which may be my contact page on my website, the UTM codes in the URL tell Google Analytics that this person came from my PDF, the, the PDF, the lead magnet. And that really helps me see the value I'm getting is terms of customers from the lead magnet. I'm taking all this effort to give my customer something for free but let's be honest, I'm doing it to get more business, right? So be sure you can track it. But you don't want to have a big long URL with all kinds of tracking parameters. Ain't nobody got time for that. Set up a redirect and make a really short one so that they can go type it in real easy and get straight to their lead magnet. Let's stop looking at the disgusting meat picture for a second. What do you do with it? So we've taken time to 
find some internal resource we can use. We've written the lead magnet, creating an empathetic problem that the lead magnet solves and a call to action. We make sure it's printable and shareable. We can track it. Great. But how do we then promote this lead magnet? There's a lot of ways to promote a good lead magnet. For one, simply adding it to your website. I think blogs make great places for lead magnets. You know, blog posts in, in my SEO strategy, blog posts tend to be trying to pick up the long tail traffic for people who aren't necessarily yet searching for my service, but have a problem. Um, another way of saying it is that the blog is for the, the top of the funnel searches and my like pages that talk about the services I have to offer are the bottom of the funnel. Well, people at the top of the funnel aren't always ready to purchase the service. They, however, might be looking and, and eventually they'll get there. Um, so if I can offer the lead magnet on my blog and the lead magnet is helpful to them where they are, in the buying process, I have already pushed them down the funnel faster because they have something in their hands that they can print out that says, wow, this is great. Um, I like to put it this way. Not everybody who visits your website is ready to marry you. Some of them just want to date you for a little bit. And lead magnets do a great job getting people to be exposed to you, getting them to know you. Maybe they flirt with you a little bit. Maybe I have these analogies going a little too far, but you know, this is what, this is great. You know, you can also not only put it in your blog uh, sidebar maybe, but you could have those, set up those little systems that nag you. Hey, you're leaving, before you leave, don't forget to download our, our well, lead magnet, but you know, we don't call it lead magnet to the client, we call it your guide to inspecting whatever, or, you know, your checklist before you start a web development or web marketing campaign, right? This is kind of what uh, one way we can promote these lead magnets. Um, I really like lead magnets for their printability. And so some one place to this is, is simply just whenever you're going to go to an event. Uh, I have clients, I, I really hate this, who spend thousands and thousands of dollars on going to conferences. And they are just convinced that those conferences deliver money for them. And I'm like, oh, if you just gave me that money and I could put it in Google ads, boy, we could do even better. But whatever, they're doing this. But sometimes what we'll do is we'll have the lead magnets printed out really professionally and we just invite people at the conference, give us a business card, and then we give them a, a, a hand-printed copy of the lead magnet. Again, we've got their business card. We've got their contact information. We just have to add that to our database, and they receive something valuable for them to take home with them, maybe to show their boss, maybe to show their employees that they would like to implement. Don't underestimate the value of just being able to take this effort offline and go there. Um, I, I found this video picture, I'm sorry, in stock photos, and you can tell how old it is because, you know, we're all on Google Plus and Vine. Um, and uh, there's a some strange social media network called Twitter. Uh, anyway, point here is social media and lead magnets work really well together. Like, I don't know how many of you have tried to offer social media as a service. Um, some people do it really well. Some people, this guy does it very poorly, right? One of the problems social media sometimes have is justifying their value. But lead magnet what can do is really give someone who is following your page. They've expressed interest in your business enough to follow you that they want to be interrupted on a Saturday afternoon on their Facebook page by seeing something from your business. Like they must be committed to your business. A lead magnet can do a really good job, you know, saying, hey, why don't we, uh, why don't you take that next step in our relationship rather than just stalking us on Facebook? Why don't you get this thing? And uh, 
a lead magnet can be a great way to get someone from just following you on a social network to getting closer to making a purchase of a service from your business. Um, but also paid social ads do really well for lead magnets. Um, you know, I am convinced that Google and Facebook and even LinkedIn make so much money from people who just waste money on social ads. So be careful about how you do social ads. Zuckerberg's got enough money. He doesn't need you to burn money on his platform. But if you do use a social ad, lead magnets convert very, very well. I created a lead magnet for a, a high-end landscaping company one time. It actually was this really interesting, he had this huge intake form weeding out bad customers. We just converted that into a lead magnet you know, gave it to people and we pushed it on Facebook to people who were in his area and we, who were ready, who owned a home, uh, who were married, like we demographic it out. That was really, really cool part about it. And we said, okay, we're going to show them how to solve their marriage problems by working through this worksheet with your spouse. So you can get your, 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 uh, uh house landscaped, right? Like, I'm in the middle of a renovation project in my house, right? I kind of need that guide to help me and my wife negotiate all the things we got to consider to to decorate our house. So well, that's what we did here, and it worked really well. And it was actually pretty cost effective for the for the cost to pay for the ads. And if he got one project from it, I mean, he could pay for thousands of clicks, right? And so it was really good. But I think. <clears throat> This is probably the most valuable part of a good lead magnet. It's transitioning from other marketing channels into an email marketing campaign. Um, you know, there's different kinds of marketing. Um, some marketing channels, you're really just renting their platform for as long as that platform allows it. Um, you know, Facebook, uh, social media is, is you're kind of renting as long as the social media algorithm favors you or as long as you're paying for ads, it works, right? But the moment like it gets competitive or the moment they change their algorithm, you're kind of not going to be as successful. However, in order to have a social media account, everybody first has to have an email address. So if you can get email addresses from potential clients, you have a list of people who are interested in what you have to offer. That's worth a lot of money. I'm not saying go buy an email list, right? That's probably the biggest waste of money you could do. But if you can grow an email list organically by collecting those emails from your um, lead magnet, boy, that could be really helpful. You know, and this kind of addresses some of these problems that I, I'm sure you've experienced too with SEO lately, right? Gosh, that the helpful content update's a killer. Uh, just seeing stuff go down, it's like frustrating. And it makes me, I'm a, been doing SEO for a while. It's like, oh, I, I'm so tired of that game. What if I were to use the relevant traffic I get collect those email addresses and then start an email marketing campaign. Uh, well, that's what we did with this kind of inspection uh, plant checklist thing. Um, we, we put the lead magnet on their site and it's just so funny without very, with very little promotion, they're just consistently getting a lead here, a lead there. Those leads go into their email ca campaign. And it almost became a joke. It was so successful. The client's like, you know, David, we need to make uh, $10,000. Will you send out another email campaign? <laughs> right. <laughs> they would just basically just print money. Because every time they'd send out an email, someone would be like, oh, yeah, I, I need to do that. And they'd get that thing. Now, not everybody offers you know, a, a product of that magnitude. But in email marketing, kind of gets overlooked as less glamorous 
you know, oh, let's do TikTok, like, uh, as long as it's legal in the United States, let's do TikTok marketing, because that's where all the kids are, like, that's what, oh, that's exciting, uh, oh, I got this new SEO trick I want to use, like, I'm, I'm all, let's, let's do that, but this boring email marketing can be so effective, and what a great way to build a list of customers, not just people there who, uh, might be interested. These are people who've downloaded a lead magnet. And boy, if they've downloaded the email, they are definitely interested in what you have to offer. And I, I also think the, the value of the lead magnet here really helps us get away from the whole, where do I rank for this game with our clients? Like, I, I, I hate that. I hate that conversation. Well, today I rank, I Googled this and I don't show up for that. Or, oh, uh, where do I rank for this day? Keyword that I randomly thought of. Like, I hate that call talk. So what I try to do with my clients is I try to pivot the conversation and make sure we're talking about not rank, but that rank that leads to traffic. Because you can think of traffic kind of as a way of, 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 uh, averaging out rank, right? The more we rank for different things, the more traffic we get, right? But traffic is not the end itself either. It's a means, again, to customer acquisition. And the more I can talk my SEO clients into, hey, you know, you know, rank is here, sure, but that's not the end. What we really want to see is rank that produces traffic, right? But, but even that's not the end yet. We want rank that produces traffic that then becomes customers. And if I can increase the number of customers to my clients by giving, for instance, a lead magnet to somebody, I find my clients stop calling me about where do I rank for this keyword kinds of questions. Because frankly, I'm keeping them too busy with the customers coming in. They just stop forget, They stop asking that. They just say, well, I've just got so many customers right now because that's their focus. Their focus is on the goal, not the step that gets them to that goal. So that's why a good lead magnet kind of kind of stop some of these frustrating conversations with clients. Now, I want to take some time uh, to answer maybe some of the questions you might have. But if you find yourself as a business owner, and you're like, I would like to do this. Um, I'm going to invite you to visit Resource Repository and download my lead magnet about how to use lead magnets to grow your business. Like, I think this is going to give you a little more depth than I was able to give you in this presentation and maybe some actionable steps so that you can develop your only magnet. Give it to your marketing person. Say, do this for me, right? Maybe this becomes something that you use to brainstorm your own lead magnet to create it. So you can take that step and do that through resource repository. But if you find yourself to be a web agency, um, I'm going to invite you to go to reliableacorn.com and get a, a strategy for you and how you as an agency can use lead magnets. Um, I think if you let every website out your door with at least a lead magnet on it, the next time that client comes to you for a new website, website refresh and says, you know, I just don't have a budget for it. You know, I can't afford to spend much on this. Because you set up a lead magnet for them, you can show them how many potential customers they might have acquired. And suddenly the conversation becomes, you have a lot of more money than you realize for your next website because of how much business it drives for you. And so this is for you web agencies who want to implement this as a solution for your clients. So, I hope this helps you implement lead magnets on your website and transforms your business as well. Thank you so much, David. Um, yeah. I've learned so much. So I put the um, the link there for... <laughs>
um, for one of those in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through some of our questions that we have. Um, and first, let's see. First thing um, was uh, Andy had a, a great comment when you were talking about um, putting that on on your website and then them signing up that a lot of times you want to um, kind of remind them that when they sign up for it, that thanks for sharing your your email with us and um, we respect your inbox. We hate spam. So we will only send you valuable content. And then I kind of added to that and maybe given them an expectation of, you know, we send emails weekly, twice, whatever it is, so that they kind of know what they're getting into. A lot of, um, a lot of businesses do um, appreciate that. Um, okay. And let's see. Um, Timothy asks, are there any recommended plugins that can pair with the PDF that could help promote the lead magnet? So what I do on my sites, my WordPress sites, I use Gravity Forms as my form. And in the response to the inquiry from Gravity Forms, I send them an invitation to download the lead magnet from like a Google Drive or a you know Dropbox link, something like that. Uh, Google Drive probably a little safer, but... So that's the system I use for WordPress websites. Uh, other times when I don't have WordPress websites or I want to run it separately, I will use a system called ConvertKit, which is really designed for this. Um, I think ConvertKit is a really easy way to set it up. Um, and you can connect ConvertKit to your WordPress. That's kind of what I do on my site. I'm actually... Uh, collecting through Gravity Forms and sending it into ConvertKit. ConvertKit manages it. But to your point, Tricia, yeah, um, as a best practice, especially if you're looking for GDPR compliance, you have to explicitly ask people to opt into being on the email list. You can't auto-select that checkbox, <laughs> right? You need to leave it unselected and let them check in. Um, you can send them a response, but you can't add them to your email. However, in your response email, you can invite them yet again to sign up for your email list and give them a second option to sign up for your email list. Because again, I like this as a means of creating an e email list full of very relevant, interested customers. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, uh, let's see. We do have a question from Karen. Um, she wants more information where you were talking about the shortened um, redirect URL and then the UTM. She said she's confused um, about that redirect. If I get a UTM link with the shortened URL for the PDF, why would I want to redirect it if I ha just have them download the PDF from the first email automation? Oh, oops, David, for, we can't hear you for some well, reason. Well, if I unmuted myself. Okay, David. there you go. <laughs> so here's the web agency link. There is not a page on my website called ATL-Magnet. That page doesn't exist. But because you're watching this webinar, what I want you to do is type in this URL into your browser, ATL-Magnet. That's why it's easy, ATL-Magnet, right? If you use this page, type this page into your browser, what you will see is a redirect to a page. With, and you'll notice in the URL browse bar, there's all this parameters. These are the UTM codes. So I've given you an easy to use URL, ATL-Magnet. If you visit that, it goes to Reliable Acorn. It goes to the page where you can get this lead magnet and it's telling Google Analytics with the UTM codes how I found you by speaking at the local SEO meetup in March, right? That's the information in the UTM code. So if you type this in, you will see the UTM codes. I'm suggesting you do in the lead magnet is a similar kind of thing. Don't just say reliableacorn.com in your lead magnet. People will click or type that in, and you'll never know they came from your, your PDF. But if you do something like slash lead magnet, slash website strategies, whatever it might be, 
and you set it up like this, now every time clicks the link, someone clicks the link in your PDF or types the link they find in your PDF, you will know because the, the redirect will send someone to the UTM codes that will tell Google Analytics how that person actually found you. Because otherwise it's gonna come up as a direct visit and that's just Google Analytics saying, how do they find you? Mm -hmm. Which isn't particularly helpful, nor does it show you the value of the lead magnet you've taken time to create. Or even more important, show your client how valuable the lead magnet is for them. So this, this what you're seeing here on the screen is actually a, uh, a trackable URL. Yeah, we've talked about UTM codes um, a little bit in the past, but um, you can see going to the link and then um, Andy put the information in there where <clears throat> basically when when David goes and looks at his Google Analytics, he's going to see that um, the clicks that came there from this specific Atlanta SEO meetup. So he's going to know directly where those links came from. And the shortener is just basically to make it look a little bit um, prettier and also easy to type. Easy to type um, is the easy key. Easy to type right? is the biggest thing. Right. Um, I don't want to make it hard for people. Otherwise, they'll be like, I ain't got time to type that big, long URL in. Yeah. I'm just going to go to reliableacorn.com or it's not even worth my time. I'm not going to visit Exactly. It. Exactly. Definitely. Okay. Um, and I think a couple people had questions and I think that, um, that we, we got most of those answered. And then Karen, um, yes, different UTM for each marketing initiative. So yes. Yeah, so for example, um, David is here giving this presentation. It will have one UTM code. Um, if he goes and, uh, has another presentation, he's going to give something, uh, at change that UTM code to have something specific for what that is. So he knows what presentation it was that um, that, that came from. Yeah, and you can see that in Andy's typing of my URL yes. in the chat, if you have access to the chat. So I've set the source to the presentation and the medium to be offline. That's kind of a standardization I use, whether I'm speaking at WordCamp Atlanta or doing a, a presentation like this. I, I don't remember offhand what I'm doing for the UTM codes in this PDF, but you, I am, right? Otherwise, it's not worth it. But then the campaign is telling you which one, SEO-ATL-202403. That's my, so I know when someone came from this campaign, meaning they met me at the Atlanta meetup, and that's how they found my website, and then it'll also say if they downloaded the PDF because I set the PDF as a goal, right? The download the PDF as a goal. So now I will be able to say, oh, great. How many people downloaded this PDF or even visited my site as a result of this? Yeah. And I think, um, Andy, you had a question. So why don't you go ahead and, and ask since you've got a good idea what you're... Well, no, I've kept quiet for most of this because a lot of it's been answered through David's talk and in the chat as well. So it's been awesome. No, I was just thinking at the very beginning of the chat, David, I was, I also gave some quick ideas of if the process on the website, so it's people land on the page. I want to download this PDF. You give your name, you give your email address, just the, the just the simple process of, uh, you know, for people on a budget, they just want to test it. Um, so, but I, I think a lot of it's been answered in the, in the chat itself. Yeah, there's a lot of tools that are, can be kind of pricey to do this. You know, for my one of my systems, I'll use Active Campaign, which is a pretty expensive tool, but it's pretty powerful. But I kind of before I got there, I just use Mailchimp. And yeah. You can do a lot of Mailchimp for free. I outgrew it, and so I wanted the extra features, and that's why I moved. But you're exactly right, Andy. Like, start small. Just prove the value build up yeah like don't i know that you know i i, I mentioned convert kit convert kit is a is a really nice little platform that can do a lot of really cool things it's really pretty cost effective but if i were you i would start simply and you can do this if you own your own website you can you know it doesn't even have to be a gravity forms. You can just do this super 
super simple. I mean, heck, I've even done this as simply as just creating a, a Google Doc that did this, right? Don't uh, t test out. The key with every testing is having an objective way to measure the results, right? Don't do this without taking the time to set up the tracking properly, like this URL for ATL Magnet, right? Take the time to do it. Every minute you put into making sure your analytics is correct, it's going to pay for itself because you're not guessing on what works and what doesn't. Like, Tricia and I have had many a long conversation about this because we remember a year ago when we all had to switch to GA4. Like, Tricia and I tried to develop products to sell people on putting into GA4, but nobody wanted to pay for it, right? That was kind of the problem we ran into. Um, now, <laughs> a year later, when all their analytics are broken, they realize we've been guessing yeah. at this. Now everybody's signed up. I guess what I'm trying to say is people often don't think about the value of tracking things. But the what I'm suggesting to all of us who do digital marketing of any form, SEO, email, social, whatever you do digitally, you should be able to track its success. Don't be seduced by big numbers of impressions in Facebook. Don't be satisfied with having a good bounce rate. Get as close as you can to tracking how many customers this effort brought in. That's why I show up at webinars, right? I know some of you have seen me at this webinar before. I know some of you have seen me at other webinars, but like I go through my analytics and I say, okay, well, I got to take a couple hours to prepare this presentation. That's client time. It's away from client time where I can be actually making money. I'm going to take time out of my day on Wednesday to do this. I mean, I like Tricia, I like Andy. I'm happy to help them out, but ultimately, Right. I have to be able to justify my time. Yeah, I, you know, it, I hope I'm not undermining my message to say I'm here to make money, but let's be honest, right? I gotta pay the bills too. I do this because it's proven that the more connections I have with people, even on webinars, this directly affects my bottom line. I know that because I've set up the tracking to show me the value of me spending my time with you. If it wasn't valuable, I would find other ways rather than just doing what, gosh, it really feels good to do a presentation. Oh, yeah, it does. I get a little pat on my back, I feel pretty smart, but that don't pay the bills. I got a mortgage company, right? I got to pay. They don't take, hey, good job. I did, I did a really great presentation in Atlanta and the mortgage company goes, okay, cool, but like, where's my money, right? So I don't really apologize. I hope I don't apologize for that. But my point is, track everything, even this, don't just build it because I said you should. Don't just build it because I said it worked for my clients. Build it and track it and know whether it works for you or not. Yeah. I One thing that you mentioned that like, I don't know why I hadn't thought of it before is like, even when you're due in person to print it out and get that business card, it's like, you know, that's just even kind of basic away from online stuff when you're doing that in person um, to have that as well. That was another great tip. I have uh, on back of my business card, if you've ever gotten a business card from me on the back of it is a URL to a free website audit. Yeah. But that page doesn't exist. It passes through the redirects like this. I purchased pens. If you've known me for a long time, you might've gotten an old school pen from me. I, I still have millions of these because I haven't given them out. There's a tracking URL on that pen to see how much business I got from giving out pens. Obviously not a lot. That's why I have a bunch left. But I knew enough to know not to bother to order more pens. Yeah. So I saved money. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I spent money, <laughs> but it, I'm like, I'm not going to reorder pens if it's not working. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. We are right at 1230. So thank you so much, David. You all, um, I put the links in there a couple of times. Um, 
for for both reliable yes both of those links um so you all go take a look check it out um and um and and get in touch with david for sure also, in putting the link in for um, our YouTube, I'll have this video up within a week. Uh, our monthly meetups are the second Wednesday of the month, 1130 a.m. Um, and right here on Zoom, our next month is April the 10th. If you all have um, any topics, anything that you're interested in hearing, please uh, send those to me um, so that we can um, we can work on getting some, some people and some topics that you all want to hear. Thank you, David, so, so much. This was um, really a great, great topic um, to hear about and will definitely help us all with our businesses. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining and uh, we will see you all next month.